I'm ranking every fire user in anime from crazy fire-breathing girlfriends like this here to characters with such powerful fire that they might as well be gods. And in a bit of a twist right out of the gate, I'm going to put the Captain Commander Yamamoto from Bleach in the god tier right away because he is one of the absolute strongest fire users in all of anime. I mean, his fire is literally as hot as the core of the sun, which is pretty godlike if you ask me. But to keep the surprises coming right away, I'm actually going to show you exactly how many characters are as strong or maybe even stronger than Yamamoto in the gods here right here because including him there are 10 of these absolute fire wielding powerhouses who I think are clearly above every other fire user in all of anime. Now who could all these characters be? Well they are all gonna be extraordinary fire users but first let's shift down from the gods here to the next strongest tier which is the dust tier. Now I'll admit that this is a bit of a strange name but basically to be in this tier, your flames have to be so incredibly powerful that they can literally turn an enemy into a pile of ash. And really, what better character to start this tier off than Genos from One Punch Man, whose incineration cannons can literally obliterate opponents and leave nothing behind. And we might as well continue introducing the next tier, so next up is the generic overpowered anime fire users tier. Well, that is a bit of a mouthful to say, maybe I should have just called it the generic tier after all. And starting off this tier, we have Magna Swing from Black Clover, who like most of the characters in this tier, can basically summon fire at will and toss it around to attack his opponents. Not the most powerful, but still very decently strong enough for his own story. However, Magna Swing might as well be a god level character compared to this next tier, which is the poof tier. And essentially, these are fairly weak fire users, at least compared to the rest ones on this list. And to start off this tier, we're gonna go way back in the history of anime to Sailor Moon, yes. And this truly was one of the OG shows, at least outside of Japan. And here, Sailor Mars is the fire using princess, but if I'm being honest, she is pretty weak. I mean, her strongest attack is Flame Sniper, but even this move isn't powerful enough to take out any strong opponents. Which honestly, it's kind of crazy that Sailor Moon is even above this final bottom tier, which I'm gonna call the barely counts as a fire user tier. And the perfect example of this is Bolts from Akamega Kill. And so while Bolts is surprisingly a pretty nice person, he has done some truly horrible things, such as incinerating entire villages with his super powered flamethrower. However, since he can't actually make fire himself, he does fall into this bottom tier. Which brings us to what might already be the most controversial ranking in the entire video, and that's because we're going to put Madara from Naruto right here. Now, before every single Madara fan types angrily in the comments below, one thing to keep in mind is that I'm ranking these characters most based on their fire powers, not necessarily all of a character's overpowered abilities. And while in general, Madara is without any doubt a god tier level fighter, his strongest fire attack, Ultimate Fire Release, is a wide-ranging attack that ultimately was able to be fairly easily blocked by many ninja, so that drops him down from god to dust tier, at least as a fire user. But while the master ninja can burst out in flames, this next character is a literal fire-breathing monster. And of course, I'm talking about Charizard from Pokemon, whose Mega X and Y transformations make him one of the more powerful monsters in all of Pokemon. Plus, he's just a personal favorite of mine, so don't complain that these transformations aren't all in the anime. This is my tier list at the moment, so I can do what I want with it. Bam! Dust tier. Even though they did make him into a fluffy toy, but that doesn't matter. And speaking of fluffy toys, do you know who also needs a hug? Well, that's gonna be this guy right here. Escanor from the Seven Deadly Sins, who is also the second person of our god tier. And that's because during the night, he becomes a whiny weakling who could sure use some support, but during high noon in the sun? Oh boy, this man becomes the literal sun god whose blazing sun powers can make even the demon king look like some kind of slime tier character. Mr. The One is god tier for sure, but even he would run like crazy from Kyoko Kirizaki from Black Cat, who is so crazy that she's going to invent a whole brand new tier for this video. And we're gonna call this the crazy fire breathing girlfriend tier. And Kirizaki definitely deserves to be here because she prefers to defeat her opponents by kissing them and then burning them from the inside. Eesh, uh, swipe 
left for me, that is. And, and while Kirizaki might freak you out as well, at least she can't literally burn your soul like Rei Ogami from Codebreaker. In fact, his flames are so strong that turning someone into ash is easy and his most powerful attack can even burn an enemy's soul so that they can never commit another crime in their entire life. Which does earn him a solid place in dust here and my vote for him to become police chief for sure. Which might actually make this next ranking here a little bit controversial because Hie from Yu Yu Hakusho uses his dark flames to become our next god tier level fire user. And you may not even know that these evil looking flames here can destroy anything in their path including people and buildings. And while this is kind of similar to what Ogami does as well who we just put in the dust here, to me Hie's flames are just so much on another level altogether that we just have to rank him in the god tier. But that's three god tier fire characters already and we still have seven left to go plus a ton of other fantastic characters. Have we ranked your favorite fire user yet? Because if not, let's knock out some of the lower tier characters in one go. First is Bakugo from My Hero Academia. And while his explosions are incredibly powerful, they only earn him a place in the generic tier because as usual, he gets the side character treatments. And I do hate to say it, but I'm also going to put his classmate Shoto Todoroki in the same tier as well, which I do still think is pretty fair because I mean, he can only truly unlock his strongest fire if he balances it with his ice powers. Plus, as we've seen recently in the manga, he couldn't even 100% take out another of the fire users that we still see later on in this ranking from his same story. And if that's not bad enough, to ruffle even more feathers, let's discuss Ace and Sabo from One Piece, because they both have the same fire devil fruit powers, but I'm going to rank one higher than the other. And let's actually start with Ace, who unlike other characters on this list, is literally made of fire. That means that normal attacks just pass right through him and he can summon huge amounts of fire to create super powerful attacks. And so because of this and maybe because of a little bit of a personal bias, I'm going to put him in dust tier. Yeah. Did you think I was going to put him in god tier? No even I have to be somewhat honest for these rankings, so yeah, we can't do that, but it does leave us with Sabo, and the big question is, does he go above? or below Ace. Well, in my personal opinion, reusing the same powers as Ace is not as impressive to me. So even though Sabo is arguably stronger because of his other fighting abilities, I'm still going to rank him down here in the generic tier for now. And I'll be honest, this next character was going to be right beside Sabo here in the generic tier. And that's because Phoenix Iki's powers are pretty standard, I'd say. Fire blasts, fire punches, we know the deal. But then I remembered two things. First, this anime came out over 35 years ago, which is actually way before I was even born, which means that we have to ask ourselves if we can really call these powers generic if Iki was one of the first mainstream characters to use them in the first place. Plus, because he has the powers of the Phoenix, every time he dies, he comes back to life even stronger. So good luck ever killing him. And all this means that I have no other choice but to make him our fourth god tier level character. Now, Nezuko from Demon Slayer is another character that I was kind of torn back and forth between. Now on the one hand, her blood-based fire powers have honestly never really defeated anyone on their own. They're more support powers to help her brother. Plus they do only affect demons. So at first I was kind of thinking of putting her into the poof tier, but because her powers are pretty unique and can deal some very serious damage to even the strongest demons, I will bump her up to the generic tier. Now this next character showing up on this tier list might shock you a little bit and that's because Levi from Black Lagoon isn't really a fire user. She actually just uses guns and explosives very well, I might add, but this is a fire tier list and there's more than one kind of fire, if you know what I mean. So we'll make her own special tier called the technically not a fire, but still a fire user tier just for her. And actually another character whose fire you definitely don't want to mess with is my super powered kitty Gojo, whose fire blast will surely take over the world unless you stop him by pressing that big red subscribe button. And next in the dust tier is possibly the most popular character on this list, Roy Mustang. The flame alchemist has an unbelievable knowledge of fire alchemy, so much so that with a single snap of his fingers, he can create super accurate and destructive fire blasts. And really, the only thing actually holding him back from God tier is that his powers are harder to use in the rain, although technically he can separate the water molecules and light the oxygen on fire by using a complex reaction using all the terminals here. 
All right, sorry, back to the tier list. Now, while Mustang is clearly a fire genius, Ayano Kanagi from Kaze no Stigma can barely control her magical Crimson Flame, which does land her in the poof tier. And if you are an avid anime watcher, you might have noticed that there are characters from one particular anime that we haven't ranked yet. And of course, I know what you're gonna say, it is of course Fire Force, which is a show literally all about fire. And we could probably put almost every character in Fire Force on this list. But that would take way too long, so instead we're going to name just a few of them. And what better way to start than with our fifth god tier character, Leonard Burns. Seriously, this man's power levels can get off the charts. His ability is called Voltage Nova, which basically lets him continuously heat up his body, giving him a huge buff in physical strength and durability the longer it stays active. He just brushes off explosions with ease and can literally melt fireproof clothing just by walking by. But now, there are only five god tier characters left, and do you think you know who they are? But even Burns doesn't get as crazy as these next three characters. And that's because I'm gonna drop another special tier called the Pyromaniacs for those fire users who are just a little bit messed in the head, if you know what I mean. And I just had to keep them together in the script because leaving them alone could lead to them setting the whole script on fire and we do not want that. The first of these is the Fire Lightning Princess Azula from Avatar who shoots off lightning blasts like a kid at a carnival game. And right next to her is Dabi from my Hero Academia, who has burned himself so much that he had to replace his own skin. He's just completely unhinged, which you would especially know if you've read the recent events in the manga, which you should. And the final member of this Pyromaniacs tier is gonna be Miyagawa from Upsycho, who has pretty standard fire powers, but is just such an evil dude who just likes to watch his enemies burn to a crisp. Now, luckily for us, the person who actually defeated Miyagawa is up next, and that is Teruki Hanazawa, also from Mob Psycho. However, Teru is a man of many talents, and for him, fire is basically a side hustle, since he can also use a ton of other psychic abilities, like force field, explosions, air whips, and more, but if we're just strictly talking about his fire powers, he's pretty average, so he's just gonna go into the generic tier. Like, for example, Teruki would stand no chance against this next character, and that's because Gabi Maru from Hell's Paradise is an explosive, flame-erupting ninja who can burn his enemies to a crisp. And while you might say that his powers aren't anything Thing super special. I just love the fact that his powers are so OP that when he is close to dying, he unlocks a fiery berserk mode that can even damage gods. Definitely deserving of at least the dust tier. And now this next character takes that to an even higher level, unveiling the sixth god tier fire user, we have Phaeton from Hunter x Hunter. Because even though he isn't even a pure fire user, his ultimate attack turns all of the damage he has taken into a blistering rising sun that literally destroyed an entire fortress. And I'd say that that by itself deserves god tier in my opinion. However, one other character that didn't quite make the god tier cut was Alibaba from from Magi, whose impressive looking flame minister's beheading sword is pretty remarkable and can easily take out weaker enemies, but just didn't do quite enough for me to put him any higher than the dust tier. And actually the same can be said for Jogo from Jujutsu Kaisen, who has some pretty incredible feats as well. He can for example create a whole volcanic dimension, and his strongest attack from the manga can bring down a massive flaming meteor that can destroy an entire city block. Which might have earned him god tier, except for what happened against the next character. And a brief manga spoiler warning here, but when Jogo fought Sukuna, the cursed spirit was defeated by this, which, I mean, what is this? I mean, technically, Sukuna is not even supposed to be able to use fire in the first place, so where the heck do we rank this guy? God tier? Rarely counts tier? I really don't know, so let's just make his own we don't know what the heck this is tier, because I'm allowed to do that, right? <laughs> well, anyways, now we've been dealing with some quite intense flames for quite a while, so let's simmer down a little bit with Hellfire Flame from One Punch Man in the poof tier. And this sword-wielding monster can kick and slash with flames, so if you're into fiery swordsmen, you might want to check him out. And right below him is Hao Asakura from Shaman King. And even though Asakura 
is basically the most powerful character in the entire show. He is only so powerful because he fights by summoning elemental spirits to fight for him, which why we're gonna put him in the barely counts tier. However, no one can say that this next character doesn't fight on his own and his fire powers are like no one else's on this list. Because this is Shishio Makoto from the legendary samurai anime Rurouni Kenshin. Now this dude is an incredible swordsman, but his flame powers actually come from a pretty horrifying source. You see, Makoto soaked his sword in the oily fat of countless opponents so that now his sword can catch on fire whenever he wants. That's pretty awful if you ask me, but still cool to watch him duel with Kenshin. And if swords aren't your thing though, how about a giant fire breathing dog? Well, that is exactly what we get with Pluto from Black Butler. And while he certainly isn't generic, I don't think he is extremely powerful either, so he's gonna go into the poof tier. Which now leads us to probably the single most generic fire user in this entire ranking, which is Mikoto Suo from the K anime. Yeah, that's right. That show is literally called K, and he can basically use his aura to create heat blasts and probably even help him keep that sulky glare on his face 24 7. Which, by the way, is basically the same expression that we get from our seventh god tier character. Sasuke from Naruto. And as you can see, we're clearly ranking him above Madara, which may trigger the Naruto fans here, but in my opinion, he has such a mastery of his special Amaterasu flames that he just has to be in the god tier. Because these super unique flames will only burn what Sasuke wants, but if he truly lets them lose, they won't stop burning until there is nothing left of his enemy. And while admittedly they didn't really work on Madara, they are super OP against basically anybody else. This means that that if Sasuke is in god tier, then his brother Itachi must be dust tier? <laughs> Man, the Naruto fanbase is gonna go insane, but kinda using the same logic as with Sabo and Ace, both of the brother's strongest flames are Materasu, but since Sasuke uses them better than his brother, I'd say, I'm just gonna have to rank Itachi a little bit below Sasuke. Oh, and if you're feeling uh, bad for Itachi, maybe we should plop him down with Kirisaki into the crazy fire girlfriend tier to cheer him up? No? Okay, well, we're just gonna have to do another into this tier, and that's gonna be Kotori Itsuke from Date Alive, which is basically a fire spirit, but not just any fire spirit, because she can transform her arm into a flaming axe or even an overpowered flame cannon, because, I mean, I guess, why not? And Megumin from Konosoba is another fire-powered girl, but she ends up in the poof tier because her fire spells quickly drain her mana power, which leaves her relying on her allies most of the time. And actually, you'll never believe that our next god tier character was actually actually a contender for the strongest fire user ever. Because this is Binimaru from Fire Force whose crimson moon attack against this fire demon literally took my breath away. I mean, wow. What a super impressive power for one of the strongest fire users in the story. And now we've only got two god tier characters left to go and I'll just warn you, they might be even stronger than Benimaru. But before we get into those top dogs though, we have Rin Okumura from Blue Exorcist who uses his supernatural blue flames and sword skills to wipe out the royalty of the demon world. However, perhaps his most impressive feat is that he created a fire attack powerful enough to take out the impure king demon, all while leaving his friends untouched by the magical blue flames. Pretty impressive stuff if you ask me, which does land him a solid spot in the dust tier. And yet another character with blue flames that we're putting in dust tier is Star June from Toriko. This master chef and gourmet hunter can create flames hot enough to melt Toriko's iron silverware attacks and even produce giant flame slashes that can create massive holes in the earth. And while Rin and Star June's blue flames are awesome to look at, this next character's fire is some of the prettiest in all of anime. Because this is Julie Risfield from Asterisk War who summons fire with the imagery of flowers. Quite nice, if you ask me, but good looks only get you only so far in this ranking, so down to the poof tier it is for you. Which uh, does bring us to Tazuki from the anime Fushigi Yugi, which is honestly a pretty powerful fighter, except that all of his firepowers comes from his magical Tessin fan, which barely counts tier for him, I guess. And actually, if you want another OG anime that will blow your mind, then check out Reka Hanabishi from The Flame of Reka. And Reka fully earns his place in the dust tier because he can summon fire at will with 
with his strongest attacks using the power of seven mythical fire dragons to demolish his enemies. However, you cannot talk about classic anime without mentioning, of course, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which of course has its very own fire user as well, Mohamed Avdol, whose stand power is called Magician Red, which does fight with fire. And honestly, did have a bit of a trouble ranking him because he's certainly not dust level, but I do think he would wipe out all of Poofed here, so even though it does kind of hurt my very soul to call anyone from JoJo generic, I'm gonna drop him into the generically overpowered tier. Which is a better spot than Stella Vermilion from Chivalry of Failed Knight earned because her fiery sword skills are not all that impressive, especially because it took her basically the whole anime to figure out that she had dragon powers. Now, that is poof tier if I've ever seen one. Though, if you want a character who is a master of his powers right from the very start of the show, you should check out Steel Magnus from A Certain Magical Index. Because this generic tier chain smoking pyromancer can summon fire with his magical runes and spells, and if he needs to bust out a strong attack, he can create a fiery monster to help fight against his opponents. But he is not actually a good guy, which can also, by the way, be said about Endeavor from My Hero Academia as well well because of the way that he basically seriously traumatized all of his kids. However, power-wise, Endeavor is certainly an absolute powerhouse of a fighter whose prominence burn attack can vaporize opponents in an instant, which does earn him a solid place in the dust tier. And so if you want the perfect person to beat some responsibility into Endeavor, look no further than Medio Leona Vermilion from Black Clover. This noblewoman magician is the captain of a royal knight squad and fights with giant explosive fire blast, which makes her the strongest strongest fire user in the story and she can certainly compete with nearly everyone else on this list and she nearly made it into god tier I think but couldn't quite crack my top 10 so she'll have to just stay at the top of the dust tier. However, this next character does in fact ascend to godhood and it is Natsu from Fairy Tale. Because even though he can get stomped out by other elements, there are almost no fire users as strong as this fire eating monster of a character whose flames are so powerful that he can melt stone just by walking past it and even take out monstrous dragons. Which does leave us with only one more god tier character left and if you've been wondering all this time if I was going to leave Shinra off yet another list, well then this one's out for you. Because the main character of Fire Force has gotten so strong that his fire can even allow him to zip around at light speed and destroy opponents with truly massive explosions. And those are just a few of the godlike abilities that he unlocks later on in the manga. But sadly, we cannot end on the fiery godliness of Shinra because we have one more character to go and that is the Flame Hashira Rengoku from Demon Slayer. Now, this may come as a shock to some of you, but Rengoku is actually not a fire user technically. Because while there was some debate about the incredible fire powers that we see in the anime, these flames are actually not real. They're just a visualization of the sword skills. However, they do look so awesome that we'll have to throw him in with Levi in the technically not a fire user, but still fire tier. But while the Hashira's elemental powers might be fake, the demon's magical abilities in Demon Slayer are very much real. So you can imagine if Rengoku was a demon and had actual fire powers, what that would look like. I mean, surely he would become one of the strongest demons alive, right? Well, if you want to find out how that would go, you can check out that video right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.